the patient's journey. Well, most care is going to be out, out, outpatient, uh, at, at, at least uh, to start. Uh, many people are started in, in, a, in acute care, perhaps, if, or they need to uh, initiate treatment if they go, they go in for, uh, into hospital for an acute infection, endocarditis, or so, so they're, uh, somebody started in, 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 in acute care on substitution treatment, uh, the circumstances might be different in, uh, than in the community. And then there's, uh, maybe you're talking about treatment and, and re recovery programs. So if somebody's goal is to uh, go into a, long, a, a, a residential treatment or a, a outpatient treatment uh, with some more uh, supports and, and counseling, that's uh, absolutely something uh, that can be uh, su supported by the system. Uh, here at Crosstown, that's not usually the pathway that, uh, that, that we see. Uh, people are look, the, the, there are people that are looking for abstinence uh, and they're looking to ultimately stop their med medications and uh, take the sort of 12 step or absent based, absent based approach. We support that, that's part of the continuum. But there are also people that don't want to stop using and are going to continue using and we need to re respect and provide that uh, care or that care pathway for for people. Uh, even within that, though, uh, people will have goals and plans and wishes that might include connecting with family, uh, going to school, or, or working. And as people move along the continuum of care, uh, their their goals or short term goals may change, and there may be opportunity uh, to change. Uh, the, the treatment that they're taking, even, you know, across town where we're providing injectable open ag agonist treatment and people are attending two, three times a day. And when they start with us, on average, people have had uh, 11 attempts of treatment and been injecting for a, a, on average of, of 15 years. So it may take time. Uh, it's not days or weeks, it's months and years before uh, most people start to make those uh, those changes uh, but when they're ready uh, we absolutely will will support people to move on to other clinics uh, and, and move on to other programs and, and oral treatments but uh, looking at the Swiss experience there is a core of about 20 or 25 percent of people who will continue on injectable opioid agonist treatment long term 20 years or even for life and uh, uh, why not? You know, this is just part of the continuum, and if somebody uh, requires this treatment uh, uh, for life, uh, then uh, we're here to provide that care as long as uh, it's appropriate and, uh, and, and people need it. Just like diabetes or high blood pressure, uh, there'd be no question you know, if somebody's still taking insulin or 10 or 20 years, is the time to stop the insulin? No, of course, it's a chronic manageable illness. Same thing with uh, high blood pressure. If somebody's on combination treatment, needs two or three different medications to, my, to, to manage their high blood pressure, uh, yes, you might try to simplify, but uh, if somebody still needs that combination of treatment uh, 15 years after starting treatment for high blood pressure, you just continue it. Of course, it's just a chronic manageable illness.